Two households, both alike in dignity, from ancient grudge breaks to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. A pair of star-crossed lovers take their lives, an end not could remove. My naked weapon is out. Poor, I will back thee. How? Turn thy back and run. Fear me not. No, Mary, I fear thee. If they dare, I will bite my thumb at them, which is a disgrace if they bury me. Do you bite your thumb, sir? No, sir, I do not bite my thumb at you, sir. But however, I do bite my thumb. Do you mean to declare us, sir? Do you quarrel, sir? No, sir. But if you do, I afford you. I serve a man as good as you. No better, sir. Well, sir. They better. Here comes one of our kids. Better. Bye, sir. Bye. Draw if you be men. Remember, Gregory, thy washing blow. Hard right, fools. What? Drawn in talk of peace. Have at the coward. Subjects, profaners of peace, profaners of this neighbor stained steel. Will they not hear? What ho, you men, you beasts? Quench the fire from your pernicious rains, with purple fountains issuing from your veins. Throw your mistempered weapons to the ground, and hear the sentence of your moved prince. Three civil brawls have been bred of an airy word, and you, old Capulet, and you, old Montague. And you, Montague, shall come with me this afternoon. And you, Capulet, come now. All men depart. You there, stop. Hey, I heard some crazy shiz happened earlier. Like a bike? Yeah, man. Hey, check out this Facebook comment. You see that? Right up! Mm, it's a pizza party. Senor Martino and his wife and daughters. Count Anselm and his beauteous sisters, the lady widow of Vitravio, Signor Placentio and his lovely nieces, Mercutio and his brother Valentine, yes. my uncle Capulet, his wife and daughters, my fair niece Rosalind, Livia, Signor Valentino and his cousin Tybalt, Lucio and the lovely Helena. A fair assembly, whither should they come? At this same feast of ancient feast of Capulets. Except the fair Rosaline, whom thou so lovest, with all the admired beauties of Verona. Go thither, and with untainted eye, compare her face with some that I shall show, and I will make thee think that thy swan is a crow. I go along, no such sight to be shown, but to rejoice in the splendor of mine own. Let's go. Walk alone. Thank you. Oh, come on, man. 
Welcome, gentlemen, ladies that have their toes unplagued by corn. Will you have a bout with them? Aha! My mistress. She that makes me dainty, she, I'll swear by, hath corns. I have seen the day that I have worn a visor and I could tell a whispering tale into a fair lady's ear. She would please. Tis gone. Tis gone. Tis gone. You are welcome, gentlemen. Come, musicians. Come, bards. Come. Aho. Aho. Give room. Foot in. What? Shall this speech be spoken for our excuse? Or shall we on without an apology? The state is out of such prolixity. We'll have no Cupid hoodwink with a scarf, bearing a Tartar's bow of laugh, nor book without prologue, faintly spoken, after the prompter, for our entrance. We'll let the ladies measure us by what they will. We'll measure them a measure and be gone. Ah, Gentle Romeo, we must have you dance. Mother. Her mother is the lady of the house, a good lady, a wise and virtuous. I nurse her daughter that you talk with all. I tell you, he that can win her heart shall have the chain. Is she a Capulet? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> oh, dear account, my life and my foe's death. No way, be gone. This sport is at its best. Uncle, this is a Montague, a foe, a villain that come hither in spite. Scorn at our solemnity this night. Content thee, gentle <laughs> cause. Let him alone. He bears like a portly gentleman. <laughs> and to say the truth, Verona brags of him. To be virtuous and well mannered youth. Find I one for the wealth of this town. It fits when such a villain is our guest. I shall not endure him. You are a saucy fool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going now. Patience perforce and willful caller greeting makes my sweet flesh tremble with this different greeting. I shall withdraw, but this intrusion shall, now seeming sweet, convert into bitter gall. Through yonder window breaks. It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise for a sun and kill the envious moon. Boom, headshot. Oh, speak again, bright angle. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Where if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. I take thee at thy word. Call me but love, and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth, I never shall be Romeo. My ears have not yet drunk in a hundred words. Of that tongue's uttering, yet I know the sound. Art thou Romeo and a Montague? Neither, fair maiden, if either thee dislike. Thou it's knowest the mask of the night is on my face. Else would a maiden blush be paint my cheek, for thou hast heard me speak tonight. O oh, gentle Romeo, if thou dost love me, pronounce it faithfully, or if thou thinkest I'm too quickly won, I'll frown and be perverse, and say thee nay. So oh, wilt thou woo, but else not for me. This truth, my Montague, I am too fond, and therefore thou may thinkest my behavior light, but trust me, gentlemen, I'll prove more to those that have more coin to be strange. I am afeard, being in night, this is all but a dream. If that thy bent love be honorable, thy proposed marriage, send me word tomorrow. Madame! I must go, a thousand times good night. All Thursday, sir, the time is so short. My fall, the fall the Capulet will have it so, and I am nothing slow to slack his haste. You say you do not know the lady's mind, uneven is the course I like it not. Immoderately she weeps for Tybalt's death, and therefore have I talked little of love, for Venus smiles not in a house of tears. Now, sir, her father counts it dangerous that she doth give her sorrow so much sway. 
and in his wisdom hastes our marriage to stop the inundation of her tears, which, too much minded by herself alone, may be put from her by society. Now do you know the reasons for this haste? Happily met my lady and my wife. That may be, sir, when I may be a wife. That may be, must be, on Thursday next. Juliet, Thursday early, I will arouse you. Now, until then, adieu, and take this holy kiss. Okay, I guess not. Good king of cats, with one of your nine lives that I mean to make bold, with you use me hereafter. Will you pluck your sword from its pitcher by the ears? This is Verona! The wretched boy who did it consort him since shall whip him hence. You like muzzled hell headed scut! Romeo, a pale and steeped in blood too. Oh, what an unkind hour is guilty of this lamentable chance. Come from that nest of death contagion and unnatural sleep. A greater power than we can contradict hath thwarted our intents. Thy husband in thy bosom there lies dead. Come, I'll dispose of thee among the sisterhood of holy nuns. See not to question for the watch is coming.
that thy bet love be honorable, thy proposed marriage, send me word tomorrow.